What's up guys, Namelock201 here, and today I'm going to be doing something that should be kind of like a tutorial video, but it's more of like a helpful video for some of you especially, who I know. I'm going to be teaching you tips and like what kinds of baseball cards there are. Personally, I know a few of you that are subscribed that collect baseball cards. I even know one of you wanted me to do more stuff like this, so this is going to be for just a few people I know. Um... I'd appreciate even if you don't collect baseball cards to watch it. Maybe you'd get into it sometime. But the first thing I'd like to say is just when I started was thinking about collecting baseball cards, I thought it was kind of like a nerdy thing. Like I thought it was just like plastic or not plastic. I don't know what this material would be, but um, like cardstock, I guess, with just like a player on it but actually once you know what you're doing it's actually kind of cool so maybe i'll be doing a part two to this we'll see if people like it but if you're a baseball fan i think you should collect baseball cards if you're not a baseball fan maybe do other sp sports stuff like that but there are cool things you can do so some of it is luck but also like you can buy stuff and buy cards like that so first we're going to be starting off with like the types of cards that there are so I'll just show you this right here. Here's a good example of a relic. There's, so this one personally, you can see it will say the player's name, the position, and the, uh, the relic there. So that one, as you can tell, it's not a jersey. Usually most of them are jerseys. This one is a piece of a bat. So this one also, it looks kind of like a present because I got it out of a certain box. Most of them will just say the player's name, a little bit of background, like, decoration I guess and then the relic so this would just be like a base bat I guess you could say so there's that here I have a big pile of them here we can go through let me try and find this other one I want to show you here it is so this one is more of like just a regular one you can see this card Vladimir Guerrero senior if you know junior it's his dad he plays for the the junior guy plays for the Blue Jays. He's a pretty good player. But this one is a Legends Relic, so this guy's a legend. You guys know what that means. I don't have to say that. But as you can see here, it's just a little piece of his jersey. Most relics will just be like that, but they'll be just current players. Also an example, at the bottom right there, I don't know if it will focus well, but I can't really read that. It says 160 out of 175. The gold number's right down here. The one, the bigger number is 175, which means there are 175, 175 of these exact cards, and I got the 160th mate. So the smaller the number, the better. So there's that. So you guys will probably know what these are. Where to go? I want to show you the cooler ones, I guess. Let me sort these out real quick. Just the cooler cards kind of difficult here I have a big pile okay so I'll just go through these here so starting off there's just Max Muncy autograph you can see it's just a pretty regular base card and it has this like this is actual not actual gold but like actual metal that looks like gold it's just called gold framed it comes out of a box it's pretty cool it's a heavier card but it's pretty neat. Personally, I wouldn't open a box of gold labels anymore. I just wanted to try it. And I'm not unhappy with the luck I got out of gold labels, the box, because what you can do, you can purchase boxes. Usually they're expensive. And you'll get a bunch of base cards, which are just regular cards. And then some rookie cards. And usually you'll get like one or two autographs. But it will tell you that if you ever go to buy one. So there's that. This one, it's another numbered. Just another autograph. Travis Shaw there. I'm just going to go through and show you guys some of these. This one I just did an auction on eBay for. Tuki Toussaint autographed rookie card. So the rookie cards are usually the most valuable cards, I'd say. Unless you get like a superstar or a legend autograph. Rookie card, just the older they are, if they were a good player. So let me think of an example. Like... Say, if you, you guys might not know, Bob Gibson, though, he's a pitcher. He was a pitcher. If you got his rookie card, it'd be worth more money because he was an older player. So, like, if that makes sense, the older the player, or, like, 
if it's a rookie that did really good in their prime, which means like when they were 20, then in the future their card will go for a lot if they had a good season, especially as a rookie. Here's another one, Jack Flaherty. You probably all know who this is, just autographed. It is numbered out of 200, so not good numbered, but at least you guys will know what that means. So remember the smaller number, the better. This one, another autographed rookie card, Harrison Bader. I just got this at a game I went to. So basically just a regular autograph. And all these cards, to know the value, all cards can be different in value. So, for example, this Jack Flaherty, he's a super good pitcher right now. We don't know where he's going in the future. Probably good. But if you wanted to buy his autograph, probably 25 to 30 40 bucks. So, it's... The better the player is, the better the, better the price. But usually not, for example, Jack Flaherty, he is a really good pitcher, but he's he's not really like a superstar, I guess, like Brett, Mike Trout. Usually a lot of these good autograph cards will be about 50 to 100 bucks. So, stuff like that. And then some of them could be, actually like Jack Flaherty, probably like 25 to 50, not 100. I don't know why I was saying that. But then, example here, Alex Wood numbered, that'd probably go for like five, ten bucks. So, he, the player has to be well known, or numbered really low. So this one, I opened this one out of a, a box. It's a Taylor Ward autograph, numbered out of nineteen, I think. Yeah, number three out of nineteen. This one, even though he's not a good player, it would sell for more. Well, he is a good player, but not like the best. He, this one would sell for more because there's only 19, 19 of these cards. But of course, if he was a better player, it'd be more demand since there's not many cards and he would be a good player. So, enough of this, I guess. Here's a bunch of, there's a bunch more. I got these two things here. Just Bryce Wilson, autograph rookie card, Brandon Woodruff. So, there's those. Um, here's an example so you can get cards with multiple relics on them. You can get cards with multiple autographs. I've seen cards before where it has three relics. So three three players on the same card with three pieces of their jersey and three of their autographs, if that makes sense. They're kind of insane. But this one, it's a picture of four players, as you can see. Mike Schmidt, uh, David Ortiz, Albert Pujols, and King Griffey Jr., so all very good players that played, it's all a piece of their jersey right there. So that is pretty neat. Um, if you would probably, if you would ask how much this sells for, you could probably get away with selling it for 30 although that would be kind of overpriced. I'd say 15 to 20 bucks right now. I don't really know. I could, I'm not really sure. That's just my guess. Um, probably less, honestly, but... I don't really know. You could list that card probably in any range because it's basically Hall of Fame players, all Hall of Fame. Not yet, though. Like, But really good player, piece of their jersey. So that card is pretty cool. The background design I don't like as much, though. So these, here's what I'm talking about. Rookie cards. Eloy Jimenez rookie card. This one I just got, like, yesterday. Astridis, Astratus Aquino. I don't know how to say his first name. He's a rookie. And then... This one back here, it is a Nolan Arenado rookie card. So, like what I mean, Nolan Arenado rookie card, he's an older player now. So his rookie card would sell for more than, like, like a Tommy Edmond rookie card I have right here. Because Tommy Edmond's still a rookie, Nolan Arenado is an older player, so his rookie card would sell for more. Plus, he's still a good player. If he would have had a good rookie year but nothing else... Like, been terrible after that. His rookie card go for nothing. But if that makes sense, then you probably know what I mean. Here's an example of a, like, a special effect card, I guess. Like, I guess that's my way of saying it. It's called a Chrome card. It's Fernando Tatis Jr. Chrome card. So if you can tell there, it's kind of like, it's like a glossy finish. It's pretty cool. If you feel it, it's kind of glossy. It's pretty cool. And then this one... It's called Gallery. You can get this out of a box or just buy individual cards. It is painted. So these cards are painted. On the back it will say, like, art by the person, by, like, people. It's pretty cool. So those boxes you can get for, like, 30 bucks. So 
Anyway, there's a bunch of this stuff. I'll give a few more examples, and then I'll get more into, like, tips of collecting, because I feel like I've just kind of been showing you guys my cards. So, right here, here's an example. This one's out of 25. It's a jumbo relic, as you can see, that big white piece in the middle. That is a piece of Paul DeYoung's gold or Goldschmidt, what? A piece of Paul DeYoung's jersey, and then his autograph right here. So, this card would probably go for 25 bucks because he's a good player as of right now. Huge, huge card, like, basically, like, huge uh, jersey, autograph for a good player, and numbered low. So, high demand card, basically. Well, not really. But then, an example here, this one's numbered out of, hun numbered out of 199, autographed rookie card, relic and it's not just a base relic see how it has that line there this card it has more as you can see like this isn't a rookie card or this isn't a rookie card this one is but still paul de young is a better player so it would go for more this one probably five but between five and fifteen bucks on this this one 25 because he's a better player and even though this card has more stuff better player if that makes sense and then, here's some stuff, I'll just give you some more examples. This one's probably one of my favorite, Matt Carpenter, but the piece right here, it's an actual piece of his jersey, so it's pretty cool there. And this one, it's numbered out of 99. This one, numbered out of 75, Yas Money Grandal, oh, there we go, Autograph Relic, and then Dylan Cousins, so... Basically, that's what it is. I If you guys haven't watched my TTM video, um, go ahead, go back up and watch th that. This is, a, like, a good follow-up after this, I guess. Um, I should have filmed this video first, but after I filmed that video, I sent Max Muncie off, got his autograph. He's not a player that will sign during the regular season. He just did a special thing where he signs on the off-season. Everyone I know got his card back, but I think it's a little too n too late now for you guys to send it off. And then Rosell Iglesias, I think I showed this one, and then Pat Neshek. Pat Neshek is a good person to send out, like I said, because he's like the starter of it. So anyway, enough talking about the cards. Tips of collecting cards. So if you ever want to, say you want to buy like a card off of ebay or amazon you probably wouldn't buy many cards off amazon more of like boxes to open um you always want to look at the corners of the cards you can have a card that looks perfect condition barely like bent at the corner it can be a rookie card when that person's in the hall of fame if they were good if they were like then the rookie card's going to go for a lot if it has barely bent quarter it could take a hundred bucks off the card so always note the condition of the cards you never want to buy a card that's, like, the relic is, like, all torn up or anything. An example of that, this one I showed you earlier, I'm trying to find it real quick. Taylor Ward, you probably can't tell, but on the jersey right here, it's, like, frayed a little bit. So there's, like, strings hanging off. They didn't get that in the picture, so there's nothing I could have done about it. Still a cool card, but always note the condition, because if, if you ever want to sell that card in the future and it's very valuable... A little bend, little mess up, ruin the whole card. Probably not for that relic just because it's a piece of the jersey, but if the corner was bent or something, then it probably wouldn't be that bad. But rookie cards like that really matter. Also, what I said earlier, numbering, the number of the cards, I mentioned this already, but the lower the number of the card, the more valuable it will be. So if there's two of the same cards, say... Let's just go with this one. Two of the same exact cards. One, though, is numbered, say, just say both of them go for 15 bucks. One of them is numbered out of 75. One of them is numbered out of 100. Buy the 75 one. Usually that probably won't happen. Two of the same cards numbered less, but the lower the number, the more valuable. You could probably add a few, like, two bucks on the card for that. I mean, just because the card. Not because... If it's 15 less, or... I don't, I don't know, never mind. <clears throat> so, I guess... I don't really know what else I would say. I'm definitely going to end the video and forget something, but... 
If you guys have any more questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll If I get questions, I'll film a part two of this answering every single question I get. So comment below. Um, one more thing. So boxes of baseball cards. You can pick them up anywhere. You can go to a little... There's always this little aisle where you can get like Pokemon cards or um, football cards, basketball cards, anything like that. Um, there's always baseball card boxes there. The boxes on the back of them, it will tell you the odds of what you can get. So like It'll tell you the odds one out of a thousand chance of getting like a relic or an autograph or something. Um, I don't really pay attention to those because I know the boxes, but definitely like do some research, look on other websites of boxes and stuff, and try and figure out what you can get them for because people different places overprice boxes so much. I've seen a box worth about twenty five bucks. There was one website selling it for like two hundred. Walmart was selling it for fifty. I could have, people were buying it for 200 I could have got it for 25 I didn't get it, but I was just looking into getting it. So, um, also boxes, people will go into Walmart or Target or anywhere, and they will, like, try and open up the box. If the box looks like it has ever been opened, do not buy that card. And then, or that box, because people could have stole something from it. Just, just beware. Usually that's not going to happen, just... If the box looks any damaged, even if you just think it was during mailing to the Walmart or something, Target, don't take your chances. Someone could have stole something out of it. So, Also, one more thing. On the bottom, you probably won't be able to see it. It's really small. Yeah, you won't. But right under the autograph, it will always say top certified autograph issue. Or, yeah, any autograph will say top certified. If it doesn't say top certified... Usually it would be on the back, sometimes on the front. If it doesn't say that, that means that it's a fake autograph. People can sign a signature just like it, and unless they like send it to some place to get it looked over by professionals, they'll try and sell it to you on eBay of their signature, literally, but it will look the same. So, personally, I found cards before, super good deals. They still could have been like, autograph issues and stuff like that, but it didn't, like, there was only a picture of the front of the card, for example. So, it would have been a super good deal. It could have been on the back of the card, but I didn't want to risk it buying a random person's autograph than the real player. So, always make sure it is a top certified or anything like that. Do not risk it going online, bidding for a card, buying anything. If it doesn't have a picture of it somewhere that doesn't mean it has to be zoomed in if you don't find a picture of it on the card somewhere do not buy that card trust me you're just going to get ripped off so basically that's all i have um yeah so if you have any questions or anything let me know in the comments i will answer them in a new video but basically i hope it helped you you guys who i know who collect cards or i know some of you probably already know everything i said but um, thanks for watching, I guess. Tell your friends about the channel. Tell your friends about collecting and stuff. If you have someone that you know who's new to collecting stuff, send them here. This will probably help them. But make sure you're not getting ripped off on cards, stuff like that. Always note the condition, and I guess that's all I can say for now. Um, so thanks for watching. Remember, like, subscribe, comment down below any questions. I'll answer them, and see you guys.